I'm so excited to start this. I've been pushing and avoiding creating this YouTube video forever. I, um, I have this weird obsession with how my voice sounds on video, so I've been avoiding it and I just, I hate how it sounds on video. I kind of like how it sounds in person, but there's just something when I hear it playing back in my, like on my phone, if I record something and I'm in the background talking or especially laughing, it's the worst. I hate it, but I'm trying to get over it. You know, this is a journey and uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try my best to uh, get over it by starting this uh, YouTube channel. Um, my YouTube channel, I named it The Beard Show because that's what my friends call me. They call me Be Rich. Um, my first name is Blake. My last name is Richards. So kind of goes. Um, and for some reason, sometimes when I talk, people don't understand what I'm saying when I pronounce my name. So um, that's why I did that instead of just my name. Um, if you catch me looking up, I'm watching this uh, football game that's on right now. Um, so I'm a little distracted, but... I'll uh, get through this. So for my first video, I wanted to just introduce myself and um, just talk about my story and what I've been through because I feel like it's important for everyone. Everyone has a story and everyone should share it. Um, I think that you are put on this earth for a reason. And I feel like what you go, th there's a purpose and a reason for everything that you go through. Um, so my job is to share that with you and I want to do that and hopefully inspire you. That's my number one goal is to inspire all of you. Um, I hope that with all the content that I'm trying to create, I hope that eventually I get a bigger following so I eventually inspire more people. Um, I mean, you know, you can ask anyone and be like, yeah, numbers on your social media don't matter, but to me, they only matter because each person has a story, each person matters, each person can be inspired and that can change, that can change the world. I mean, that's so powerful to me. So um, I feel like uh, the more content I create, I just hope that a lot of people watch and if they don't wanna, if they don't wanna watch, that's okay. But the people that do, I appreciate you and the people that care what I have to say. I uh, just want to say thank you in advance. Uh, so I just want to jump in and tell you my story. So I was born with a disability. I was born with spina bifida. This disability is kind of hard to explain because there's like different forms of it. There's more severe forms and then there's forms that I have. I was so fortunate. I So I was born with a hole in my my back um so like all the tendons and everything that are in your spine were literally like coming out and uh so as soon as i came out of the canal my uh or you know whatever happened um the doctors had to sew that incision or sew that and make a um make a you know, fix it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. They had to fix it, and uh, so now I have a permanent scar there. I can't really show you. It's it's kind of in a weird spot, um, but anyway. So I was born with a hole in my spine, basically, and um, that has come with a lot of complications as far as, like, my balance. I, I can balance, like, just fine, I guess, but... Um, I guess I need a little bit of help in that area because I wear leg braces on a daily basis. Um, they go about to my knee, maybe, I mean, not exactly to my knee because then I wouldn't be able to bend my knee at all and I'd be walking straight legged, but, um, so yeah, I wear leg braces. Um, I wouldn't say I have a intellectual disability because... I don't, I think that I'm more than capable of performing in school, um, just like everyone else, but
but some subjects I do struggle in. Um, and uh, the doctors have said that typically people with spina bifida struggle in history, English, and uh, sometimes math, I believe. Those happen to be the, the topics that I struggle in. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's an intellectual disability at all. I'd say it's more uh, physical just because there's more physical uh, complications that come with it than just like not being able to understand or I can you know speak on my own I'm very fortunate for that um, so to add on to that I've had this this summer will be my 10th surgery I'm only 20 years old so I feel like again going back to um, the purpose in life I believe that that is part of my purpose I believe that um, I believe that going through this medical situation is part of my purpose because I believe that I was built and born to overcome it. And even though it's still going to stay with me for the rest of my life, unless there's some, you know, medical um, advancements that are made, um, I'm, I'm going to get the best care that I can. I was born at probably the best hospital that I could have been born at, um, whether it's in the country or um, in the state of Indiana. So I was very, so fortunate um, to be born at Riley Hospital for Children, uh, just to shop them out real quick. And so like I said, I've had 10 surgeries, um, or the, the summer will be my 10th surgery. Um, so I'm a little nervous, but I believe I've been put on this earth to go through that. And then, like I said, tell the world about it because, you know, good things come from, good things come from bad things. You can't have a testimony without a test, you know? So I feel like this is just my test to add to my testimony. And although a lot of, a lot of times I'm, you know, in pain or, I shouldn't say in pain, I'm not, I'm not in pain that much. I mean, um, when I was in high school, I was in pain more often just because of my feet um, having complications, but um, it's more of like just na like nagging complications that come throughout the day, like things that I have to do, um, like I guess you could call them proce not procedures on myself, but you know what I mean, like just things that I have to do that are just annoying throughout the day, every every day, um, whenever they come up, uh, luckily they don't happen that much, but I still have to, uh, I still have to handle those things on a daily basis. There's things that I have to do every day and, um, I've gotten used to it at this point, but you know, it can be annoying sometimes. Uh, sometimes you just don't want to do it. Just that's normal with every situation. Um, and then when I was five years old, my parents were divorced. Um, they got divorced. I don't really remember much of it just because I was so young. Um, so, like, I'm not saying that it was like a traumatic experience, but I do remember days where after they got divorced and um, after they got divorced, my mom and I moved to Arizona and she started dating this guy. Um, I'm not sure how long it was after they got divorced. I'm sure it was a while, but um, we started living in Arizona with him and just the distance because my dad lived in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and then we lived in Arizona, which is on basically the opposite side of the country. So um, that 
transition was weird not being able to see my dad sometimes i do remember like if he called my mom uh, for any reason like if he wanted to see me uh, i would i would really miss him i'd want to talk to him there were days where i would just go to mom and be like hey i miss dad and then she would put me on a plane and um, get me to see him uh, when she could and again i was fortunate for that just because there's a lot of uh, parents that go through a divorce and then one parent doesn't see their kids a lot and I think that's really sad because you know for whatever reason you know whether it's they don't end up liking each other for certain reasons or they think that they're better than the other parent I think that's I mean, in some circumstances, that is the case, but I think that's not really fair. I think to have your child grow up in a good environment, no matter if you work it out with your spouse or not, I believe that um, I believe that it's more beneficial for the child to see both parents, um, unless it's a environment that's not suitable for the child then obviously that's a different case but um in good cases i believe that the child should be seeing both parents uh, just to have that bond of of both of them that was an amazing play um i have a little cheat sheet just because i i'm i think of i think of this kind of as public speaking sometimes which is another reason i Put this off because I hate public speaking with a passion. Um, I mean, even if I'm just talking about my story, I I just kind of lose track sometimes. I get nervous, and just this is to just keep me calm. It's again, it's a weird thing, but it's something I have to I have to uh, learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So it's something I have to deal with, and something I have to get over, and I'm gonna get over it. So. Um, like I said, we moved to Arizona, uh, to live with her boyfriend and that's when I, that's when my like memory, my most, my oldest memories start to like enter my mind because I just, it's something that I just, um, can recall the most, I guess. Um, whenever we were living there, it was a good time, uh. I loved Arizona. It was, it was an awesome place. If any of you are from Arizona, um, I lived in Ahwatukee, which I believe is close to Phoenix. Um, I think it was like 30 minutes from the Phoenix airport. Uh, it was, it was such a nice place. I love the warm weather, um, but I love Indiana just as much. Um, so then. I remember this boyfriend, um, they would occasionally get in fights. He had kind of, he kind of had a temper, uh, which I didn't like at all because when I was little, I was, um, I was very timid, I guess you could say. Like if someone yelled, I would start sweating and <laughs> get all nervous and scared. Um, and there was plenty of that. Um, and then my mom realized that we missed, or she missed her family, which is in Ohio. Um, so we wanted to move back to Indiana, um, uh, which is also beneficial because my, my hospital was there. So all my doctors that I've seen were there. Um, so we ended up moving back to Indiana, thank God, because that's when I started making my my like lifelong friends um there's only a couple that I could name but it doesn't matter about you know how many friends you have it matters about the quality of who they are and they're some of the most awesome people that I could talk about um my mom ended up marrying this this guy she got remarried and I don't remember how long they were married, but it was not easy because like I said, he had a temper and they would argue 
a lot and he would um he would uh drink wine a lot and that would affect him and he was very manipulative like like um he would scare me in a manipulative way so like when he got in those states um of being drunk basically he would like i don't know i remember one night i went down uh downstairs before i went to bed and i was in like this is in uh elementary school i was going downstairs before i went to bed he was sitting in his a chair of some sort in the kitchen area talking to my mom and i believe that they've been they had been fighting um like the last day or so and it was very uncomfortable for me um and at this point i knew that he had been drinking a little bit that night um so my mom was frustrated and when you're frustrated your words jumble and she said all right blake tell tell your stepdad and i'm not gonna say his name your stepdad uh goodbye instead of good night and he you know got an attitude and he was like oh okay all right, goodbye. And he went to shake my hand and I was just like, what are you doing, dude? Like, like that back then scared me because of like the level of insanity that I saw in his eyes whenever he would be in those states and whenever he would try to mess with my head. Like, I don't know. It was just, it was a very toxic environment. And, um, like when he would help me on my homework um he was one of those old school guys that you have to uh do things repetitively which i believe in but he would take it to a whole nother level like if i i'm i'm more of a perfectionist or at least i was back then whenever i come to writing um, so back then, if I wrote a letter and I didn't like how it looked or if it looked too sloppy or something, I would erase it. If I erased too many times, he would get mad and break the eraser off of my pencil. That was scary because he would do it in like this aggressive way. And then he would like slam the pencil back on, on the table. And it would just mess with my head, man. And I had enough going on because when I was in elementary school, like I said, I met um, some of my lifelong friends that I have now. But I was getting bullied because I, of the way I looked, basically, because I had a disability. Uh, like I said, I have leg braces. And I, with my disability, I don't run very fast. So I think the bullying started when I was at recess because this kid would pick on me because we would do like, like every Friday or something, for example. Um, I don't know if this is right, but um, occasionally we would have races at the end of recess. All the kids would get together and we would line up in line and we would race each other. There was like four people in line to race. And he would always get in another line to race me. And, uh, you know, I didn't care back then. You know, when you're a kid, you just kind of go with the flow. You're having fun. You don't care. And so when I would race him, I would come in last, basically. But he would, after he got done running through the line, he would laugh at me because I was so slow. And I was like, all right, whatever, dude. But then he just kept on doing it, kept on picking on me for other things. Um, he was manipulative, too. He would um, he would tell me things 
Or like tell me I can do things like, I don't know, hang out with him at recess. Or um, one one thing was he, I liked, I, I love baseball. I love sports in general. So one day on the bus, he um, gave me, gave me, told me I could have a baseball card that I wanted. So I put it in my backpack. And then when we got to school, he told our teacher that I stole it from him. So she was like, Blake, did you steal this from him? And I pulled it out of my backpack. I was like, he literally told me I could have it. He gave it to me. And so he would just play mind games like that, try to get me in trouble. Like, like um, just dumb, immature pranks. Um, but then occasionally he would be aggressive um, if I made him mad for some reason. And... Or if he just wanted to mess with me, like one day he threw a basketball at my head at recess, um, which is not the coolest thing, but also because I have a disability and I have a, you can't really see it from this angle, but I have a scar right here. Um, I have a device in my, my head that drains the spinal fluid, I guess, from my head and make sure that like everything is circulating and I don't have enough or I don't have too much fluid in my head and it just goes to the rest of my body um so like I'm not sure if that would have been like dangerous for him to do um but like either way that's not cool you don't throw things at people <laughs> I don't care what it is uh one day we were in class we had just gotten there and oh the national anthem or whatever the you know the where you put your hand on your heart and you recite the, the thing in school uh we were doing the pledge of allegiance that's what it is he would um he would be sitting behind me and he like kicked me in the back one day and and it was at the end of the, the Pledge of Allegiance. And so I like fell out of my seat really awkwardly. And I'm pretty sure that like kind of hurt. So everyone around me like saw it. They're like, why don't you tell the teacher? And at that point, um, I wanted to, cause I mean, this went on for like four more, I'm going to say more than four years. Um, but definitely for at least three years um he would just pick on me and you know conveniently enough we were in the same class so it didn't really end that much but people would be like why don't you tell the teacher and at that point i for some reason thought that me telling on him would have gotten me in trouble even though i didn't do anything wrong like for some reason i thought that like, you know those times where, like, you get in a fight at school and they suspend both of you because you're fighting, but no matter what the situation is, it doesn't matter if you're getting bullied. Like, even if you're standing up for yourself, you somehow get suspended just because you're fighting. It's kind of like that mentality. Like, for some reason, I just thought that I'd be in trouble if I told anyone. So I didn't tell the teacher. Someone else told the teacher, like, hey... Blake just got kicked in the back, and so that's when, that's, pro I think the first time that uh, he got caught doing something mean to me, and so he got taken down to the principal's office at one point, and then at one point, uh, we got taken down together because the, t uh, the dean, I guess, is her title she wanted to know like my side of the story and so I guess that was beneficial but at the same time I was scared because you know I had that mentality of like you know what did I do wrong or you know just I don't know I was I was a very innocent kid back then just like too innocent like being scared that you don't do like that you're gonna get in trouble for not doing anything that's just ridiculous now that i think about it but i mean i wish i told someone earlier but 
eventually um, the dean assured me that if he continued to do this, he would be um, either expen expelled or suspended. Um, that did not happen because he stopped doing it. Uh, he stopped picking on me. Um, and occasionally he would still like pick on me on the bus or whatever because we lived in the same neighborhood. But uh, no, luckily that stopped eventually. So thank God for that. But I feel like now that I've gone through that, if I were ever to be in that situation again, I I would stand up for myself more. I I'd, I'd, I wouldn't be able to tell people what's going on. I wouldn't be able to even fight if I had to. If I'm getting physically basically assaulted, like I'm going to defend myself now. Um, so that happened. And then eventually my mom got divorced from my stepdad because it got so bad uh, that she would talk to me and she'd be like, are you happy with what's going on? Like, how are you being affected? And so we talked it out and I was like, mom, listen, I don't like, it's not my life, but at the same time, cause I was young, you know, I wasn't gonna tell her exactly what to do. I wasn't gonna say, no, you need to leave. But at the same time I was like, yeah, we have fun and stuff, but like, this is not okay and blah, blah, blah. So she ended up divorcing him. Thank God that happened. Um, and so then my mom and I move into an apartment by ourselves, a two bedroom apartment. Um, and it was actually pretty cool. Like I got my space, she got her space. Like it was cool. Um, and then we had a house built um, in the same neighborhood that our old house was with my ex stepdad. Um, and I love that house. That, that house was, uh, this is not the house that we, we live in an apartment now, but the house that we built was was really cool. I made a lot of memories there with my friends. Um, and then in high school, I got off to a bad start with my grades. Um, like I said, I feel like my abilities are the same as any other kid. I feel like I am roughly a B student if I really like A, B, maybe C plus, depending on the the uh, the class. But if I really apply myself, I think I can do really well in school. Um, but in high school, I just got off to a bad start. Um, I was trying to make the baseball team and I was trying to make that transition from junior high to high school and it just wasn't clicking for me. And I, I don't know what else happened. I mean, I just, I just either didn't get the material or I just didn't try hard enough. Part of me thinks I didn't try hard enough. And um, looking back, I wish I did, but at the same time, you know, things happen for a reason. And so, um, then my sophomore year, I had surgery, um, during the summer, uh, to fix one of my legs, um, that kind of worked, <laughs> um, it put me in a lot of pain, just because they had to put, like, a, a rod, I guess you could say, and some nails in my leg, um, which, it was, it was, a pretty grueling recovery like I couldn't even um, go up the steps at school because it was so painful so I would end up taking the elevator most days um, that was in my like junior and senior year I ended up taking the elevator more often um, but then my I'd say my junior year is when I got the kick in the butt from myself to start performing better in school and so my to give you a like reference point of how bad it was my first semester of of freshman year I believe or the second semester either one I had a 1.7 GPA 
so I had that much room to improve um, because I ended up failing a semester of my English class freshman year. I just, English is just not my class, you know, it's just, it, I struggle. And again, I didn't work as hard as I should have, like the homework messed me up and stuff. And um, Also reading, if I have a class that like you have to read a, a book, chances are it's not gonna work out for me. I mean, like I'll try to read the book and then I'll most likely just stop reading it or I'll like fall behind a little bit but just reading is just not something I enjoy. So I uh, didn't do well in that class, but then my junior year, I had a class with my baseball coach. And that's when I really turned around because he was intense. Like if you, if you didn't make grades, he would tell you. And I really wanted to impress him just because, you know, he's a baseball coach, he's head baseball coach. So you gotta do what you gotta do, put in the work. And I was honestly kind of tired of my mom because meaning like telling me about, you know, how I need to improve in school, not being sick of her, but like she would um, tell me I can't do things with my friends because my grades were bad. And like she would mention in front of my friends, like, you get that assignment done and like you gotta you know you know you go work really hard because your grades aren't good and you know that just it was embarrassing and i just couldn't take it anymore so junior year i kicked it in the gear i got up i believe to a 2.4 and actually before my um before my junior year started i believe i had a like a 2-2 two, two, something like that and I had a guidance counselor I went into his office one day and he was like so Blake have you thought about college at all and I was like you know I've I've thought about college like I want to go I think I know what I want to do um, but I'm just not sure where I should go and where I should apply and I was naming some schools that I had thought about just because they were in the state of Indiana. I didn't have a desire to go outside of Indiana at all. And I told him I wanted to go, um, one of the schools I had mentioned was Ball State. And he flat out told me that he didn't think that I was gonna get in. Granted, at the time, the GPA that I had, he was correct because their minimum GPA, or I guess their uh, their um, their average GPA was a 3.0. I didn't know their minimum until my junior senior year, so their average was a 3.0, and I was like, oh, all right, thanks for telling me that. So that kind of crushed my dreams of going there. Um, but regardless. I mean, guidance counselors shouldn't tell you you can't do something uh, academically. I mean, their job is to guide you to do better, to help you in life. And that was not something that I needed to hear at that moment, but it kind of was. So he told me that he didn't think I'd make it. So by my junior year I got my GPA up to around a 2426 ish area maybe not sure <laughs> and then my senior year I had the best counselor the best guidance counselor you could have um, I had him my one of my freshman semesters but I kind of forgot how he was and how cool he was but then I had him my senior year and he was a game changer. Let me tell you, oh my goodness, this man helped me so much. This is like, he's part of the reason that I want to be a high school guidance counselor. I want to do other things too, but just because he was such a big influence in my life, I want to do the same thing for kids. 
they're in high school because I feel like in high school you have a lot of people that are telling you you can't do certain things you can't you know you're not good enough um, you got to figure out what you want in life and I think that's not true sometimes like sometimes it's okay to not know what you want to do right after high school like we're humans sometimes we just it takes a longer time for some people to find their passion and like what they're good at um so this man tells me he's like did you know that you can um actually i didn't figure out from him um i figured out from a friend that you could retake classes that you got a d or worse in i didn't know that until my junior year which kind of um is the reason that i feel like i could have been better like off if i found that out earlier but i'm glad you know everything happens for a reason so i found out from a friend and i told him i was like hey i heard that you can retake some classes and was, he's like oh yeah i didn't i uh think you should do that and so i retook some classes i retook like three classes i retook spanish because i was horrible at it um and some other stuff was happening um that i forgot to mention like my grandpa passed away um, my sophomore year of high school um, so that was a big ordeal on on my life um, and so I retook three classes I retook Spanish and I think like geometry or something something weird I don't know but I ended up taking two or three classes um, I got a's and i think one b but i was so happy because that raised my gpa up to a 2.8 i graduated with a 2.8 i got rejected from my number one choice college three times because i was applying when my gpa was still a 2.4 um and then towards the end of my senior year I was like I told my guidance counselor I was like what do I have to do to get into this college and he was like let me talk to him because I that's when I got denied twice and or three times and he was like if you I checked your grades if you keep performing the way that you are because um, I had like all A's and B's at that point I didn't have any C's um, I didn't have anything below a C on my report card at that point. He was like, if you keep performing the way that you are, if you graduate with th these grades, you'll get into Ball State, which is the college I go, go to now. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get there. And I was so happy. So then I reapplied again after my my grades were like, nearing being final um just because they they already knew what my grades were but i had to go through the process um because we had a representative from that school um, at my high school working with students and so she was the one that said you know if you get to this point you'll get accepted so i replied again i wait i wait i didn't find out until school was over i found out like the first day of summer or like you know a week into summer or something like that i got accepted and the weight that had lifted off of my shoulders was so big just because i had all these i had friends that told me that they didn't think that i was going to make it into ball state but i grinded so hard I raised my GPA from a 1.7 to a 2.8 and I know that's like not a big deal but at the same time I also messed up my my freshman year so bad because I didn't retake classes during the summer and I could have done that so I could have had a 3.0 maybe maybe but I was just happy to get into Ball State. Um, I love it so far. 
Um, so another message that I have for you guys, don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. Like that's ridiculous. That They don't know you, they don't know your life, they don't know your work ethic. If you, if you grind your butt off and and believe that you can do something, that's up to you, that's not up to them. Don't let them tell you otherwise. That's ridiculous. And so I had all these people telling me I couldn't do it and I finally did it, I was so happy. Uh, I went to graduation, that was a cool day. It was kind of, it's kind of weird, it's kind of nerve wracking because you have to remember like how to walk through the line and everything. So um, I was kind of nervous doing that, but um i i like wanted to cry like when i got the news that i accept i got accepted into this college but i just couldn't produce tears like i was just super happy like this i was just like yeah I was, like i was just super happy um and then so i graduated um and now i'm going to ball state to become a counselor um, like I said, I want to do high school guidance counseling, but I also want to do, um, like individual counseling, like marriage counseling, um, maybe addictions, uh, counseling, like people that are addicted to certain things, counsel them, um, and mental health counseling, because that's how I started finding my passion. I would get messages on Instagram um, from from friends that I had made online that said that they weren't happy and they didn't want to live anymore. And like, I've had people tell me that they tried to end their life and it was, it was traumatic on me because I had to go in that mode of like, okay, what do I do? What do I say? to stop them from doing this horrible thing and something that's not worth it and how do I change their mind and basically change their life like save them from dying and but it was so rewarding because I could hear them say to me like you did this for me and I'm so like happy that you're you're here for me and and just like tell hearing someone say that I've been there for them in certain times when they needed someone is really rewarding for me because I feel like a lot of people get scared in those moments and that's rightfully so like that's a big deal but like even when people like have anxiety or depression but they're not suicidal like that's still a big deal that that's still hard to know how to handle those situations so I feel like you're born with that gift of knowing what to do in those situations um so that's how I found my gift of listening I listen to people and I'm good at helping them through situations and that's why I want to be a counselor um so I'm going to school I'm double majoring in psychology and sociology um, I have a couple minors, like three minors, um, but I got to get my grades up again. It's nothing I haven't been through before, but my uh, my medical situation has been kind of hard on me, so I've got to pick up the pace, and then I got to go to um, graduate school, get my master's for counseling. It's, there's no other way you, you have to. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm not sure what school I'm looking at yet. I'm prob probably going to look at staying at the school I'm at right now if I get accepted or at least like, like applying there. Um, just because I love it so much and their program is so awesome because you can go get your degree in school counseling but then stay an extra semester or year to get your license in regular counseling, mental health counseling, and that's like perfect for me right now. So I might end up doing that. Um, I'll update you guys whenever I get to that 
point in my life. I'm a sophomore right now, so I've got two more years left of regular regular college before I get my degree for bachelor's. Um, so I still got some time left. I'm still not in the in the rush of things, but at the same time, I'm working on my micro speed. Um, if any of you guys follow Gary, Gary V, so look him up. You'll understand. He's all about the micro speed, macro patience. You know, like short term speed, working working things at a fast pace, but in the long term, be patient because you got a long life. Um, so, like I've said, I want to go into counseling. I've, I'd also love to be a baseball coach at some point uh, on the side um, because that's another passion of mine is baseball. And because I've had a disability, I haven't had the ability to um, to perform at a level that some of the other kids do. I'm good at baseball, I, I would say. I mean, I have high um, self-efficacy, I think it's called. Um, kind of blanking on terms right now. But I have a high belief in my abilities. And I think I'm really good at baseball. I know the sport. I know how it works. I know, you know what to do in certain situations but my abilities just don't match up to other kids. And I just couldn't, if I can't make a high school baseball team, um, my senior year, how am I gonna move on to college? How am I gonna move on to the, the professional league? Like, it's just not attainable for me. So I think, you know, in the future, I'll try to uh, do like a, like a pickup league or whatever you call it. Like, you know, those clubs the club leagues um, for adults. Probably try to do that so I get to play a little bit. But um, my main goal is to become a baseball coach so I can continue the passion. And also at the same time, why not, you know, inspire other kids that are going through different situations in life. And it's perfect because if you work at a high school you can be hired as a high school baseball coach at least the high school that I went to so um, I'd love to work there uh, it's one of my dreams um, I just made a dream board the other day and it's the best thing I've ever done this year it's only four days in but it's still good um, I just, I would love to work there. I'd love to change kids' lives. I'd, I'd love to be a role model, an inspiration to them. Um, so like I said, I have a lot of, of, a lot of personal goals to make money and provide for my future family and um, to just get benefit out of with, with what my gifts are, you know? But I have a goal for my social media to inspire y'all because like I t said in the beginning, I was put on this earth to go through difficult things with my, um, with my disability, but I'm gonna overcome it because I was built this way. I've always overcome my surgeries. I've always overcome um, my recoveries. Like it's nothing, but at the same time, um, it's kind of hard, but life is hard, so buckle up, <laughs> get through it. And then my, my, um, my other purpose is to tell people about it after I get up, after I overcome it, you got to tell some people, you got to inspire people. So that's my goal for y'all. And, um, I hope this video helps people. I hope, um, people that are struggling know that they can reach out to me at any time. Um, I hope people enjoy watching my content, but if you don't, that's okay. Not everyone is, is about 
you know, mental health and serious topics, people want to hear serious stuff or funny stuff in instead of serious stuff. And I understand that. This isn't for everyone. But um, for the people that do enjoy it, I appreciate you. Uh, leave comments. Like it. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. Just look me up. Um, I believe both my Instagram and Twitter are Blake underscore A underscore Richards. Um, but I will definitely put it in the comments or the description, whatever you call it. Um, of this video and I will talk to you guys later. See ya.